Hi healthy buddies, I'm Dr. Tirta Wijaya. Welcome to my channel where we will discuss about various health matters. Today, we will discuss about cataract. Before we begin, let us learn the basic about our eyes so you will know what we are talking about. This is the diagram of the eye. The colorful part of the eye is called iris. It is Greek word means rainbow, colorful rainbow. The center part surrounded by iris is called pupil. The structure behind the iris and pupil is called lens surrounded by muscles to adjust the lens, while the clear layer in front of them is called cornea. The innermost layer in this diagram represents retina that is connected to the brain via optic nerve. Our eyes work in similar fashion with analog camera. When we see an object, the light reflected from the object will enter our eyes through the cornea. The iris will relax or contract to dilate or constrict the pupil size to adjust the amount of light entering our eyes, just like a camera shutter. In bright light, the iris contracts and thus the constricting the pupil to reduce the amount of light entering our eyes. In dim light, it is the other way around. The light then enters the lens to be refracted to the retina. The retina captures the image, just like film in the analog camera does. This captured image was sent to the brain via optic nerve for further processing. Normally, the lens is flexible, so it can be adjusted by the surrounding muscle to focus the image on the retina. When our eyes are not able to focus the image on the retina, we will have blurry vision. This is called refractive errors. If the focal point falls in front of the retina, we call it myopia or nearsightedness. If the focal point is behind the retina, we call it hypermetropia or farsightedness. We will discuss about the refractive errors in another video. Not only flexible, in order to be able to refract the lights properly, the lens must be clear too. Cataract is the condition when our eye lens is cloudy, thus obstructing the light from reaching the retina. It is the leading cause of adult blindness worldwide, especially in developing countries. There are several different types of cataract. Age-related cataract, radiation cataract, traumatic cataract, pediatric cataracts, and secondary cataract. From the names, you can guess the cause of each cataract. So if you are not interested in my explanation about the type and causes of the cataracts, please jump to the next section. Age-related cataract is the most common type of cataract. As we age, the normal proteins in our lens starts to break down, change shape, and clump together, causing lens cloudiness. The lens becomes thicker and less flexible, yellowish, and less transparent. This usually begins to happen after the age of 40. These changes happen very gradually over many years, which most patients start to have some clouding of their lenses after the age of 60, and starting to have vision problems years later. However, this is not always the case. Cataract can develop rather quickly in some people, so it is quite difficult to predict. Our risk of developing age-related cataract is higher if you smoke or exposed to air pollution, drink alcohol, have diabetes, using corticosteroids, and have family history of cataract, and have history of certain eye diseases like uveitis, retina pigmentosa, or glaucoma. Far out of these six are modifiable. You can actively lower your risk by not smoking, not exposing yourself to toxic air, not consuming alcohol, and not abusing corticosteroids. Please note the word abuse. Corticosteroids are prescription drugs usually prescribed by doctors only if the benefits outweigh the risk. So I am not telling you to ditch the steroid prescribed by your doctors. Radiation cataract is caused by some types of radiation, like ultraviolet rays from the sun or radiation treatment for cancer. Some early studies suggest that blue lights can cause cataract, while red light may be beneficial in delaying it. But these are not really conclusive yet. More studies need to be done on this, so I won't discuss about them now. Traumatic cataract is caused by physical lens damage. It may happen soon after the injury, but it can take many years to develop too. Your risk of getting this type of cataract is higher if you are not using proper eye protection for risky activities. Pediatric cataract affects babies and children. It is rare and usually runs in the family. 
but it can happen due to other causes too, just like in adults. For example, because of eye injury, radiation, certain eye diseases, etc. Secondary cataract is caused by scar tissue that appears after cataract surgery. About 50% patients who have cataract surgery will develop a secondary cataract within 5 years after the surgery. But it does not mean the cataract has returned. Once the original natural cloudy lens is removed, the cataract in that lens is removed too. Cataract cannot form in the artificial lens being inserted to replace the natural lens. What happens in secondary cataract is posterior capsular opacification, where the posterior part of the lens capsule becomes cloudy. We will talk more about this in the treatment sections. Symptoms of cataract include blurry vision like looking through a dirty glass window, double vision or ghost image, photophobia or extra sensitivity to the light. You may see halos around light source or glares, the difficulties to see in dim light, fading colors or severe vision. We don't have to have all these symptoms to know that we have cataract. And some of these symptoms may be due to other problems too, like macular degeneration, vitamin A deficiency, glaucoma, etc. So, it is hard to diagnose cataract based on symptoms alone. It is best for you to visit your doctor to get checked if you have any of these eye symptoms to find out what is really bothering you. Don't wait until you have all the symptoms I mentioned. Don't wait until your quality of life is severely reduced. As I often say, prevention is better than cure. Early diagnosis allows more treatment options and better outcome. So it is better to get those eyes checked but turn out to be nothing serious rather than to dismiss the symptoms you feel as nothing only to find it to be something grave with nothing can be done about it. To diagnose cataract, doctor will need to check the affected eyes physically. Some cataracts are so fully prone that everyone can recognize it right away just by looking at the eyes. But for most patients, doctors need to do comprehensive eye examination, including visual acuity test, where doctor will ask the patient to read aloud some random letters or numbers at a distance, one eye at a time. Then slit lamp examination to check cornea, iris, and lens. Most of the time, doctor need to dilate the pupil too using a special eye drop to be able to see more. This papillary dilation will last several hours up to one day, causing blurry vision. That is why patients should not drive or ride after the eye examination. It is better to have someone to accompany you for this eye examination and take you home afterwards. Then sometimes doctors do ophthalmoscopy to see the structures in the eye behind the iris. Your doctor will use an ophthalmoscope to peek inside the eye, like the lens, the retina, the macula. This test is done in a dark room to increase the contrast between objects reflecting light from the ophthalmoscope and the dark surrounding. In case of cataract, doctor may not be able to see clearly if the lens is too opaque. In early cataract, we call it incipient cataract, most light still can reach the retina, creating slightly blurry vision. Most patients with incipient cataract can do most if not all, they are daily tasks only with minor complaints like extra glare. Doctor can see blobs of thin clouding in the lens. In moderate cataract, less light reaching the retina. Patient will experience noticeable blurry vision that make it difficult to see small prints or in dim light, and the problem with glare will get worse. In ophthalmoscopy, doctor can see clearer change of the lens. We call it immature cataract. In mature cataract, even lesser lights can reach the retina because it is blocked by dense clouding of the lens, making it difficult for patients to see properly. Likewise, in ophthalmoscopy, the doctor will have a hard time to see the structure behind the cloudy lens too. If most or all light is blocked, as in a hypermature cataract, the person is practically blind in the affected eye. The vision is very poor or patient can only differentiate between light and dark. That we can say the affected eye is blind, the girly blind. Now, the big question is how to fix cataract? There is only one effective way, cataract surgery. Some eye drops may be able to slow down the progression of cataract, but up to now, there is no evidence-based treatment to reverse cataract except surgery. 
when patients are still able to do their daily activities safely, like in incipient or immature cataract, they may prefer conservative options like prescription glasses to help with their vision. They can also use brighter lights in their house to see things clearer. Doctor will recommend surgery to remove the lens, or we call it cataract extraction surgery, or cataract surgery for short. When the visual impairment due to cataract affecting patient daily living like working, grooming, driving or riding, cooking, etc. This is because cataract surgery, just as other surgeries, has risks that need to be weighed against the benefits. When patients are still able to see, albeit not so clearly, the risk of cataract surgery outweigh the minor benefits. There is no set point of time to decide when to do the surgery. In addition to patient quality of life, we need to consider other factors too to determine the cataract treatment like other health conditions. For example, due to systemic nature of the disease, doctors may prefer to treat diabetic patients earlier. Earlier modern cataract surgery also found to give better outcomes in patients with glaucoma. Number two, patient's occupation and lifestyle. For example, if patient is a driver, Doctor may suggest surgery earlier compared to a retiree who lives at a nursing facility. Cataract extraction surgery is performed by an eye specialist or ophthalmologist as a day surgery. Patient may or may not stay overnight for the preparation, but most of the time can be discharged a few hours after the surgery. There are different cataract surgeries, but the basic concept is the same. During a cataract surgery, doctors slice the anterior part of the capsule surrounding the natural lens in order to remove that lens, the cloudy ones, but leave the capsule behind to encase the artificial lens. Cataract cannot grow in this artificial lens. When patients experience cataract after a cataract surgery of the same eye, the problem happens on the posterior capsule here, not in the lens. Several weeks months or years after the cataract surgery, this posterior part of the capsule can become cloudy or wrinkled. We call this posterior capsule opacification and the remedy is quite straightforward. Your ophthalmologist will do posterior capsulotomy using a laser to create an opening in the cloudy capsule so lights can pass through it for clear vision. This procedure usually takes about five minutes and patient does not need hospital admission. The most common cataract surgery nowadays is phacoemulsification, also known as phaco surgery, where an ultrasonic device is used to emulsify the lens. Emulsification means to break up to very small grains, just like when you beat up hard-boiled eggs until they are almost like liquid to make mayonnaise. The emulsified lens then sucked out and the doctor insert the intraocular lens, or IOL for short, into the capsule. Because incision in phaco surgery is very small, it is self-sealing. No stitches needed. The whole procedure can take as short as 8 minutes. Some heart cataracts are not good candidates for phaco emulsification and need bigger incision to remove the lens physically. In such cases, the ophthalmologist has to perform a more traditional extracapsular cataract extraction or ECCE. In ECCE, the doctor will squeeze out the cloudy lens as a whole via the incision, insert the new IOLs, then stitch the incision. This surgery will take about half an hour and the sutures may need to be removed in one or two months after the surgery. The latest technology in cataract surgery is femtosecond laser assisted cataract surgery or FLACS, FLEX. In this surgery, a precise laser slice open the anterior lens capsule and soften the lens. Then it is followed by phaco emulsification. The uh, flex is done to reduce the damage to the inner surface of the cornea. Thus, it is more beneficial for patients with risky cornea, less healthy cornea. As per now, there are three types of IOL available, monofocal, multifocal, and toric. Monofocal IOLs only have one focus, to correct either far vision or near vision. When patients with presbyopia need cataract surgeries for both eyes, doctor may correct one eye for far vision and the other eye for near vision. This way, patient can see both far and near without glasses anymore, but may have minor problem with fine depth perception. 
This cannot be done if patient only did one eye cataract surgery. Multifocal IOLs can correct both far and near vision in each eye and no longer need glasses. But this kind of IOLs may be associated with increased glare and reduced contrast and generally not recommended if patient did LASIK before. These IOLs do not correct corneal astigmatism. So patient will need glasses post-surgery to correct the vision accordingly. Patient can undergo corneal incision surgery to correct the astigmatism too, if they haven't done this before. Or they can opt to use toric IOL to correct the astigmatism. In order to choose the most suitable type and measurement of the IOLs, you need to tell the ophthalmologist whether you had done any laser refractive surgery before. If you are wearing contact lenses, you need to stop wearing them for two weeks before the IOLs completion, so your doctor can get the correct measurements. As for prevention, in case you skip the first part of this video, it depends on the cause of the cataract. The cataract caused by smoke or exposure to air pollution is best prevented by stop smoking and avoid air pollution. Cataract related to alcohol can be prevented by not consuming alcohol. Cataract linked to diabetes can be prevented by preventing diabetes. Cataract as side effect of long-term corticosteroid abuse can be avoided by not abusing corticosteroid. Cataracts resulted by radiation of UV from the sun can be prevented by using a proper anti-UV glasses. Radiation treatment for cancer usually be done with proper uh, protection. So patients need to follow their radiation therapist instructions. Cataract related to eye injuries can be prevented by using proper eye protection during the risky activities or avoid those activities altogether. That is my sharing today about cataract. I hope you find this information useful and can be a blessing. If you like this kind of health information, please like this video and subscribe so you can continue to enjoy similar videos. Please feel free to type in the comment any health related matters you want me to cover in future videos. As a gentle reminder, please do not consult your health problem here. That must be done privately with your doctor. Thank you for watching. See you in the next videos. Stay healthy and happy.